What's up traders, Andrew O'Connell here with Pristine Capital. We finally got a market rally. I believe it was like six or so days of red action. And we finally got it, team. Remember, the seasonality is about to pick up as well. Let's dive into this action. S&P 500 finished up 1.97%. Our NASDAQ QQQ finished up 1.99%. Small caps roared back up 3.16%. Our dogs of the Dow were dogs today, only up 1.86%. Our ARK Innovation ETF was up 4.66%. That was the big winner. We've got a big position in the ARK Innovation ETF, which is great. Almost all of these indices, they close towards the upper end of their day's range. We did get a very nice volatility crush. Breadth was overwhelmingly positive. We had 93% advancers in the small caps, and overall up volume was 92.1%. The trend model did flip intraday from a negative three reading to a negative one reading. So that is fantastic. In terms of today's economic data, what did we get? We also have to talk about the ECB. That was insane, absolutely nutty. So what do we get? Retail inventories actually increased. We got this goods trade balance, negative 87.3 billion, not really super market moving. That's more of like a long-term thing. And investors and traders, who cares about the long-term, am I right? Uh, wholesale inventories also did increase. Pending home sales declined more than expected. Remember, we talked about this in last night's video. We're in an environment where bad news is good news because the Fed is trying to slow the economy and inflation. So pending home sales coming in slower and worse than expected, that's great news for the markets. Markets ended up rallying today. We had our Fed speakers, of course. But the big thing was overnight, we got a headline. I believe it was like right after the close yesterday. I'm not even sure if it was overnight. But Apple, they said, hey, we're not going to be increasing production at our facilities. And originally, the market was taking that very negatively. Apple is just such a big component of the S&P 500. It makes up about 6.5% of the index. Market was already pretty weak, right? So it doesn't take much to like just topple things over. Market was red overnight. I remember waking up at like 4 a.m. looking at the futures. I, got, I probably shouldn't do that. I like look at the futures first thing when I wake up. I saw that we were red, and I was like, oh, brother, I am going back to sleep. I saw the market was down like a full percent. Then I saw news, oh, my gosh, UK bond yields just moving out to the upside. Basically, it just looks like there's really no liquidity, no buyers for those UK bonds. Remember, the GBP, Great British Pound, just had like a flash crash the other day. So there's a lot of instability in that region, right? And it was like, oh, my gosh, you know, it's just You know, just erratic moves in global markets, FX markets, bond markets, not a good look. Basically, what's going on is we went from Fed officials that, you know, had way too loose monetary policy in 2020, 2021. Now we went from that extreme, oh my gosh, you're way too loose, to now it's you're going way too tight, way too quickly, and the market's already breaking. But we got the stick save. The Bank of England came out and said, guys, we are going to be doing a QE program. They didn't call it QE, but it is QE, quantitative easing. And they are going to be buying the long end of the yield curve for their uh, for their bond market. So that just immediately alleviated the pressure. Basically, they bent the knee. They said, all right, we tap out, tapping out. Here you go. You guys won. We are going to go ahead and just buy these bonds because no one else will buy them. So is it a Ponzi scheme? I'll leave that up to you to decide. But it is good for us as traders. Immediately, that just sent a positive impulse through the market. And it just led to a very nice day of price action. And we have to ask ourselves, like, okay, Bank of England, you know, they just capitulated. They went from QT to QE. It's freaking embarrassing. But anyway, so that happened. And the way these central banks work, you know, a lot of it is like, I don't want to say it's all coordinated, but they try to be on the same page. And I think the market just kind of read into this as like, okay, monetary policy was too tight. We're seeing the first semblance of some capitulation. And we ended up having a really nice bond market rally today. We had the dollar selling off. And I think the market just kind of perceived this as like, we've hit maximum tightness. And like maximum perceived tightness 
And all of a sudden, some of these crowded trades, like short treasuries, being long the dollar, being short equities, that was just so crowded. But we were not getting any anything in the way of a catalyst to reverse the direction. That capitulation by the BOE was the catalyst. And so, not really a big catalyst for the United States, right? But that's all it takes when everyone is on one side of the trade. All right, so let's talk about the price action. S&P 500 had a nice day, right? We're basically right on top of the five-day exponential moving average, and we undercut the June lows. We had a nice capitulation event. Now it kind of looks like we've been basing up for a few days, and we're starting to move to the upside. Let's look at the hourly candle, or the hourly chart. And look at this. I think if you're looking for a bounce, as we mentioned last night, first level of resistance is this weekly value where you're low at 37.82 spot 75. Take a look here. We'll flip over to the NASDAQ. It's pretty good because Apple was really hamstrung by that production, you know, not going to increase production headline. But the NASDAQ still did pretty well. You can see very nice day for the NASDAQ. And this is occurring on a higher volume than all of the down days over the past few sessions. So I think that's pretty good. Again, it's just one day, right? It's not like we can say like, oh yeah, you know, it's all over, all upside from here. But hey, it's better than another vicious down day, right? And we've been tracking the seasonality. Today was day 30, I believe, of the sell-off. We only have two more days left in September. We've got quarter end, month end, and PCE inflation data on Friday. All going to be very big, right? You know, we got to monitor for all that. We could have some wonky price action. It's a toss-up, but I think once we get through September, suddenly that really good seasonality kicks in. We know a lot of the tax loss harvesting for this year probably occurred at some point over this past 30-day sell-off, right? I mean, that had to be part of it. There are a lot of losses to harvest for tax season this year. And, you know, if that selling is done for the most part, unless some big macro shock occurs which we've already had a few this week, the market's handling them pretty well, I think we could see a much you know, brighter picture for the next couple of months into your end. Dow Jones looking very similar, you know, just kind of pivoting off the lows. So yeah, I think things are starting to shape up. Let's go to the dollar. The dollar index down 1.19%. Big outside reversal candle. We needed that. And we mentioned over the last couple of videos Hey, the dollar index is three standard deviations above that 20-day simple moving average. And we knew if the dollar sold off, that was going to be the green light for an equity rally. Same thing with the bonds. The bonds were just so oversold. Like, look at this ZB contract. And we got a nice rally today. So thank goodness. I mean, yesterday was just a crazy day. I will definitely say, like, this looks like a capitulation event. Yeah, I'm sure there's a bunch of people out there that they're like so surprised this market rally. Twitter space. Let's not FOMO into the market. It's like FOMO, like this market's so beaten down and oversold. But I think, you know, we saw the positioning was pretty much all one way. Most investors are pretty short the market. And that's all right. They were right for so long. I mean, this has been a crazy sell off. Anyone that's not. That wasn't shorting with poor location. You know, they did pretty fantastic. So let's take a look here. Uh, we did have some uh, leading stocks moving to the upside. Let's go through our, you know, full gamut right here. We'll touch on the sector style factors, all that good stuff. The VIX futures curve, it's still inverted. So we can't officially say this vol event is over. That is very important. Today was a violent bounce within a bearish trend. Finviz heat map, take a look. We did have, let's swap this out. Yeah, so we had pretty much everything except Apple trading in positive territory. I do think that Apple is kind of hamstrung by that headline. You know, I'm sure there's some panic selling, whatever. It's kind of crowded in there as well. But now that that is sort of out of the system, if Apple comes online tomorrow and has a positive day, that's really going to help the market. The fact that we had such a big up day and the biggest component of the market was not even pulling any weight. It was actually a negative contributor. 
you know, I don't think the market's like overbought or anything like that. Sectors. Look at this biotech. We talked about this in the pre-market within our trading group saying, hey, biotech is definitely in play for today. Biotech was up 5.15%, our top momentum slot. Arc Genomics is now in our number two slot. We have the gold miners. They had, a, they had an impressive day as well, up 7.18%. These moves are huge, right? And it's really because we're coming off the back of some insanely negative moves over the past week. So the bounces are always pretty big. In terms of style factors, what did we have? Our small cap value style factor was up 2.68%. What else did we have? Some big move quality was up 2.38%. Oh, excuse me. Our biggest winner was high beta. And remember, we saw this divergence yesterday that high beta outperformed. So it is always important to look at these divergences under the hood. They can often lead the way. And remember, we were also seeing like, hey, Bitcoin's been performing pretty well on a relative basis the past few sessions. And uh, sure enough, we just had a nice sequence. I didn't really do a whole lot of trading. I did make a couple maneuvers today. I bought to close my uh, Rumble, which used to be CFVI when I put this position on. I sold some puts on this company. I had originally received $1.45 of a credit. Went pretty big on this trade. This is a three-star trade. And I closed those out for $0.75. Cents. So a nice, almost 50% winner there. And I did that just to free up some buying power so I could add another trade on. I got long the Wolf, December 16th, 105 calls for 1960. And I put here, this name has acted like a leader for the entire 30-day sell-off. Now, this is what I would call a premium hand, where it, the stock has been a fantastic leader, a nice relative strength, uh, the whole nine. Every once in a while, though, this is a game of chance. Sometimes you play a premium hand, and it just doesn't work. Look at that. And I can't say it, you know, it hasn't worked, but Wolf, for the most part today, was down pretty big. It's always a bummer when this happens. It's like, man, I had like the market going in my favor. My process for selecting stocks was going in my favor. And like this just happens to be like one of a handful of names that's in the red. You know, every once in a while that happens, but that is just part of the game. You know, it's going to happen. Do I think Wolf is done down for the count? No, not really. For now, I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt. You know, for whatever reason, there really weren't many buyers today. There were actually some sellers. But I could see this stock moving pretty nicely as we get into the end of the year. But that that is kind of like a bummer. It's like, geez, I picked like the one name just that just happened to sit out of this rally. What else did I do? I added to my long-term Bitcoin position for 19,091. And with this position, I'm assuming there's a 70% chance that Bitcoin goes to zero in the long term, and a 30% chance it goes to 100K over the long term. This has a positive expected value based on these assumptions. My average cost for my Bitcoin position now is 23,160 spot 71. And I actually think the chance of Bitcoin going to 100,000 over the long term is much higher than 30%. Let's take a look. What did Bitcoin do today? Yeah, Bitcoin, pretty nice day. Uh, closed out, or I guess it doesn't close out, trades 24-7. Right now it's trading at 19,543. So today definitely going to be doing a lot of scanning, just seeing what really worked today, what did not work. And honestly, I think it's just take the balance for what it's worth. It's a good balance. If you're positioned long, you know, that's great. And uh, if you are not positioned long, I definitely think it's a good time to just start scanning the market and seeing which stocks look good. I know there's a lot of people out there that are super afraid right now, but... You know, we did see a central bank pivot today, and we are entering some really good seasonality. So I'll be posting my research tonight in the charts channel. We'll be talking about the best names in the market. One that I do just just off the top of my head for anyone listening is company Frey. This is a battery company, EV, or yeah, battery company. And this one just looks pretty fantastic. We got some nice volume maybe like a week ago. This one is definitely a good candidate. Definitely one to keep on your radar, but there's definitely a ton after today's price action. And if the market keeps going up, we're going to see more bullish setups. So definitely keep that in mind. All right, everyone, have a great night. It's good to see some nice positive action, and we'll see you all tomorrow.